Els, uh, dear friends, it's an honor to be here among you in this very important initiative um, on International Women's Day, um, especially in collaboration with the Women's Committee of the NCRI. It's um, very heartwarming to have such great women, yourself and each and every one of you by our side, because we are giving the message um, to the women of Iran that you're not alone, we are standing with you. Um, again, let me take this opportunity to congratulate you on International Women's Day to all the women around the world, particularly our dear sisters in Iran, the big prison of Iran, who are steadfast and they have pledged, you know, to pass the message of change until, you know, this regime is overthrown. Dear friends, as December 2017 was coming to a close, the simmering wave of discontent took a sharp turn and erupted into radical anti-government protests which shook the, under, the earth underneath the regime. The protests spread to over 142 cities across the country. Most remarkably, women were actively engaged everywhere in every protest, confrontation, and venture. Women have demonstrated tremendous courage uh, fearlessly confronting armed security forces despite being empty-handed, encouraging others not to fear, to carry on, inviting everyone to join the protest, leading the chants, tearing down images of Khamenei in every city, and fending off security forces trying to apprehend young protesters. On the second day of protest, it was an Iranian woman who, um, in the western city of Hamadan, who was the first to lead the chant of death to Khamenei while surrounded by security forces, and this was pure courage. Another chant, which uh, was reformist, hardliners, the game is over, was first chanted by women and men, young university students of Tehran, who clearly um, sent a message that uh, so-called reform doesn't exist in Iran. And the difference with this uprising and the past protests is that, is that the people have clearly and openly demanded the overthrow of the clerical regime, vowing to not back down until they topple the mullahs. They have said that they will pay whatever the price to establish freedom and rid the countries of the clerical regime. Um, even political deputies of the Iranian regime have stated, uh, they have said that in the 1980s, the leaders of the street protests uh, were the PMOI, were, the, were in fact women. And today, they also have stated that the ringleaders inciting the protests were women, again. And in fact, our message today is to reiterate that the ringleaders for regime change in Iran are also the defiant women of Iran who will not settle for anything other than regime change. The brave revolt of the Iranian women against the regime is beyond just fighting against, um, you know, um, poverty or the compulsory veil. It's for the end of the theocratic dictatorship in its entirety and establishing democracy and freedom for our country. Since Khomeini began his ominous rule, one of the first laws that he imposed against women was the compulsory veil. On March 7, 19, um, 1979, he imposed the compulsory veil on female employees. The person in charge of implementing this law was Rouhani, the current president of the Iranian regime. In a protest march against the compulsory veil in March uh, 1979, it was in fact members of the PMOI, um, the Mujahideen women, who participated to, prote to protect women who opposed the veil while Despite themselves, they were covered with the headscarf. Um, we have said time again that no one can dictate to a woman what she must or she must not wear. From day one, imposing the veil on a woman was a means of repression and obstructing women's way forward and nothing else. The truth to the matter is that whenever the regime wants to politically suffocate the society, they launch campaigns to arrest women under pretext of improper veiling, improper clothing. And this is why the Iranian regime has 26 ministries and agencies just in charge of clamping down on uh, the suppression of women and controlling what, how they, 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 they dress. The ruling mullahs claim that this is in accordance to the instructions of Islam. Imposing the veil by compulsion is totally against Islam. Faith is based on free choice and free will. 
The, Qur the Quran stipulates there is no compulsion in religion. Therefore, anything that is forcibly imposed on people against a genuine Islam, whether it is imposed religion or veil, is wrong. Mandatory veiling against, um, is against Islam is, and is only meant to enchain women and um, facilitate clampdown against women. And that explains why Iran's uprising is not only for the overthrow um, of a political regime, but it's a revolt against religious fundamentalism. Uh, this is a hopeful dawn. This is a hopeful message because um, not only for the people of Iran, but the people of the world in the region, because fundamentalism was born um, with the rule of religious tyranny in Iran when Khomeini took over. And it, um, this religious fundamentalism and this idea started to crush when the people came out at the end of the December 9th this year, 2017. Our movement has always called for freedom of choice for women in the 10-point plan that Mrs. Rajavi has um, uh, proposed for a future Iran. She has clearly stated that women are free to choose their own clothing. Government interference in this regard is prohibited. The law of force feeling shall be, shall be repealed. Laws that prescribe anti administrative punishment for lack of feeling of, of female workers or employees shall, shall be repealed. And she has stated that um, written or unwritten laws on controlling the clothing or behavior of women under the rubric of malveiling, which have violated Iranian women's rights to freedom and security, shall have no place in tomorrow's Iran. And again, she mentioned in the Council of Europe in January uh, 24th, she demanded her. Dem she said, "My demands and the demands of my com compatriots are these: immediate release of pr the prisoners of Iran uprising, freedom of." Of speech and association, the abolition of suppression of women, and the compulsory veil. Dear friends, having borne the brunt of repression for almost 40 years under the Mullah's rule, Iranian women are the force for change. And they're like a compressed coil that is going to spring out um, even further as repression uh, disappears and is removed. As Mrs. Rajavi has mentioned in her speech in Paris on February 17th, um, on International Women's Day, she said women did not come to the streets to, to demand anything from the regime. They want to eliminate the clerical regime. Women have not risen up to demand their own freedom. They have risen up to liberate the entire nation. And also allow me to mention that we would like to thank you know, all her efforts, Mrs. Rajavi's relentless efforts and her, her leadership in this res resistance to confront Islamic fundamentalism, tyranny, and her efforts for equality. And we thank her for this glorious path. Uh, dear friends, the day of the Iranian people's freedom is not far. The day when the people of Iran and the people of the region will be liberated from the clutches of warmongering um, in Iran is soon to come. It is then when peace and security will be guaranteed in the world. The women of Iran are resolved to turn the page of our country's history in the 21st century, and they deserve the support of all freedom-loving people in the world. Our message to the Iranian regime is your days are numbered, a democratic change in Iran is inevitable, and I ask you, and I say we must rise, and I ask you to join us in this path. Thank you very much.